So good morning everybody and uh, welcome to our Restart Heart Basic Life Support and AD session for the uh, fifth day in, in the run of uh, Restart Heart videos uh, and the things that we should be shown online. Uh, by way of an introduction, uh, my name is David Hamer, I'm one of the operation managers here at South Central Ambulance Service and it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you all virtually uh, to this uh, Basic Life Support and AD session today. I'm really hoping that lots of schools and workplaces are, are joining us. Uh, be it virtually, we're normally in schools uh, throughout the South Central region at this time, uh, but unfortunately due to COVID uh, we're, we're doing things virtually again this year. But no matter where you are, who you are, whatever you're turning in on, you're all absolutely welcome to be with us this morning and it's a pleasure to have you. The comments section is live, so whilst we're going through today's demonstration, if you do want to uh, put a comment in, if you've got a question, please do ask it and one of the team will get back to you as quickly as we can. If you are taking any photos of your events today, it'd be great to absolutely see those. Um, you can email them to us as well, um, rah at scas, which is S-C-A-S, dot N-H-S dot U-K. We would love to receive your photos. We will put them online to show what activities people will be getting up to. And it'd be really great to publicise um, basic life support and the use of an AD. So over the last week or so, you've seen um, some videos um, on how, to, uh, how easy it is to do CPR and use an AED. Um, you've watched a cardiac arrest survivor talk about uh, their story and you've seen the positive impact that learning CPR can have. Every year within the ambulance service we attend approximately 30,000 uh, pre-hospital cardiac arrests. Out of those, only one in ten will survive, which is a really shocking figure for a UK national average. But even more shockingly, 80% of those will happen in the home. So that's why it's so important that we get the message and the training out about how to do CPR. Today I'm going to show you how to do basic life support and also how to use an AD, but we are going to be using some slightly modified COVID-19 guidelines. They've been modified by the Recess Council of the United Kingdom to provide maximum chance of survival whilst also uh, balancing that against rescuer safety. So let's get into the demonstration, let's get into the practical and let's start thinking about the chain of survival. Uh, it's four rings that uh, identify what should happen if somebody collapses and gives them the best possible chance of survival should they suffer a cardiac arrest. The first thing is early recognition. Early recognition to understand that somebody is in a cardiac arrest situation and then to call 999. Early CPR to buy some time. This person desperately needs uh, the, their body, uh, their heart to be pumped and the, the blood to be pumped around their body to buy the time to get them to hospital. Early defibrillation. An absolute mainstay of uh, basic life support is to use a defib to restart the heart and we'll talk about the defib use a bit later on. And then post resuscitative care which is delivered by uh, other medical professionals, ALS providers like myself and, and paramedics, as well as in hospital as well. But most importantly, the first three elements of the chain of survival, anybody can do. And that's what we're here to teach you to do today. So I hope you might have a mannequin if you're in a school. If not, you might have a teddy bear somewhere. Whatever, I don't mind. Let's just get on with it and have a bit of fun with this. So the first thing we're gonna do, somebody has collapsed in front of me. It's never a good day in the ambulance station. Someone's always collapsing. We need to check if there's any danger. I don't want to turn up, I know that any of my colleagues want to turn up to two casualties. One casualty is difficult enough, so you've always got to make sure for danger. So have a consideration about what could be dangerous. So things like water, electricity, um, mechanical machinery, um, cars, other people that might be very emotional can all be dangerous to yourself. Just be aware of your surroundings and your environment. Make sure you're happy to proceed in and help the patient. At this point, if you're on your own, or even if you're not on your own, but in a, maybe an office situation or something like that, you need to shout for help. You need to get somebody else to help you if possible. Um, so we're gonna have a nice big loud shout for help. And we're gonna go help and really try and get some people to come around and assist you with the situation. It will make it a lot easier for you. The next thing we need to do is see what sort of response we're getting from our patients. So we can give them a little uh, shake, a little shout at them. So, hello, can you hear me? Now, obviously my mannequin here has only got half a body. I'm afraid there are no legs, but we could start from the leg end and we could shake a foot and see if we get a response. If we don't, we could move up to the shoulders just very carefully and just shake the shoulders. Now, one or two things is gonna happen here. Either they're gonna respond, which is absolutely brilliant. If they do respond, phone 999, listen to the call takers instructions and, and follow them. However, if they don't make a response, we're then going to have to move on to start doing some basic life support. So traditionally, at this point, we would go and look at the airway. However, because of COVID-19, a lot of people don't feel safe to look at an airway, and that's absolutely fine. We're going to do chest-only CPR. 
If you are worried that the person might have COVID-19, they advise that you place a small tea towel over their face or over their mouth and nose. This is not going to hinder the rescue. It is not going to harm the person, okay? So if you do want to put a tea towel over there, absolutely fine. We're now going to assess their breathing. So I want you to look at the chest and I want you to see if they are breathing. A good rise and fall of the chest. We want to be checking uh, for 10 seconds and we want to see two good breaths in those 10 seconds. That will equal around about 12 breaths a minute. That will let us know if they're breathing or not. At this point, we then need to phone 999. Phone 999 and then speak to the operator. They will then guide you through these next steps as well. You can put the, uh, the phone on loudspeaker if you want to. That's really good. So if they're not breathing, you're then gonna be directed to do CPR. So this is where we get really hands-on now. How we do chest compressions. We need to interlock our hands or hold our hands like so. So we, whatever way makes it comfortable, that's absolutely fine. They're gonna go center of the chest in the middle of the sternum here. And you're gonna lean up and over your casualty. You're gonna use your body weight to do the compressions. You're not gonna use your arms. You want to compress the chest to a depth of around about five to six centimeters, which is about two inches or so. And you want to compress at a rate of around about 120 compressions per minute. It goes something like this. So if you do have a mannequin and you want to jump on it and, and get compressing, feel free. It's all good practice. And we're going to keep compressing and we're just going to keep going along like this. And we're going to keep compressing. And it is quite tiring, so you, if you do have other colleagues around that can help, every minute or so, swap over and just keep compressing that chest. So, I'm going to stop now, because it's a little bit tiring, and we're going to run through the whole situation again. So again, if you've got your mannequins, or you're just watching again, we're going to run through the whole process. So I'm going to walk into a, an imaginary room, I'm afraid, and suddenly see someone collapse on the floor. I'm going to check. What am I going to check for? You can all shout out in the comments if you want to. Absolutely fine. I'm going to check for danger. And I'm in a pretty clear room here. I'm quite happy that there are no dangers to myself. So I'm going to approach. It is empty. So I'm going to shout for help. Help. Can someone come and give me some help, please? And I'm going to check this uh, person's response. So hello. Can you hear me at all? Can you hear me? They absolutely can't hear me. Um, and they're not responding in any way at all. So that's not good. Not sure if they've got COVID or not. I'm not going to touch the airway. I'm quite happy with that. But I am going to check their breathing now and I'm going to have a look. So I'm going to check for those 10 seconds. Uh, and I'm checking and they're still not breathing. No, they're absolutely not breathing. I'm happy that they're not breathing. I'm going to have to start uh, chest compressions. But first of all, I'm going to phone 999. So I'm going to call 999, put them on loudspeaker. And as soon as I'm through to them, I'm going to put my hands in the middle of the chest. And again, if you've got a mannequin, we can start compressing the chest again. So here we go. And we're going to start compressing. You'll notice that when I'm compressing, I'm getting what we call good recoil. So I'm actually lifting the, my hands just very slightly off the chest. That allows for a good compression to happen each and every time. And I'm using my body weight to do this. I'm not using my, my arms or the strength in my biceps to do this. And I'm going to keep going now. And you, like I said, you could be compressing for a very long time. But ultimately, we aim to have professional help with you within eight minutes. So I'm going to stop now, and you can stop as well, because the next stage within the basic life support would be to use a, an AED. So an AED is an automated external defibrillator. There's many of them around in the UK. They're widely seen throughout uh, shopping centres, airports, workplaces. Um, and, and they look something very similar to this. Now, people historically have been, been quite scared to use them. They're not sure what they do, how they work, um, or literally what they do. So a defibrillator does exactly that. It defibrillates the heart. So what is fibrillation? So fibrillation, with your heart, it normally beats uh, with a standard beat, like so. And then fibrillation is where the heart starts to quiver. And it wobbles a bit like a jelly, as I like to, like to say. And a wobbly heart is not going to pump blood around the body. So what the defibrillator does is, by putting the pads on the chest, it recognises if this person has this particular pattern of heart rhythm. And by sending a shock to it, it stuns the heart, allowing it then to hopefully regain its natural rhythm and start pumping blood around the body again. And they're so simple to use and so very effective against what we, uh, with something we call ventricular fibrillation. So the components of an AD 
are very similar. They're actually they're almost identical. However, different manufacturers look uh, in diff different ways, but they all do the same thing. So they all have an on-off button, which is here on this particular model. They have um, a shock button, which is here. Now, the nice thing about the shock button is it's a safe button. So unless the DPIV actually wants to deliver a shock, pushing it will do absolutely nothing. So you're never going to harm your patient. They all have a set of pads, which uh, I'll show you in a moment. And most importantly, they tell you exactly what to do. So when you're doing CPR, if somebody comes to you with a DFib, that is a point where you can stop doing chest compressions and you can put the DFib on. You put the pads on as shown by the pictures on the pads. So if I take the pads out of this, this model, this is actually a training DFib, so very slightly different to original. You'll see here that this has a one and a picture and a two with a picture, and that tells me the placement of the pads. Effectively, on our mannequin, we place one up here and one right round here underneath the armpit. Once we've placed those on, the instructions will move on and the machine will analyse, and it will want to say whether it wants to deliver a shock or not. If it does want to deliver a shock, then it will talk you through that. If it doesn't want to deliver a shock, it will ask you to commence CPR again. So, I'm going to show you how to use the AED. Uh, being a training uh, AD, it will shock, um, and, and we're going to go right from the top again because I think it's really great practice. Again, you can all join in, um, and, and here we go right from the top this time. So again, I've walked into my office space and I've seen somebody collapse on the floor. I'm checking for danger. I can't see any danger, so I'm going to shout for help. Help, can someone come and help me please? I need some assistance here. Just going to check for uh, a response. Shake the feet, shake the shoulders. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And I'm still getting absolutely no response. Not worried about the airway. So we're going to uh, check for breathing. So I'm doing my breathing check again for 10 seconds and I'm looking for those two breaths. I can't see any breathing, so I'm now phoning 999. Pop them on loudspeaker. I'm going to start doing the compressions. And fortunately, whilst I was doing the compressions, one of my work colleagues came running into the room saw what was happening and went to get the works defibrillator, which they've kindly delivered to my left-hand side. So that has just been delivered. So I'm now going to stop doing my compressions and I'm going to put the, the AED on. So you'll notice now that I'm going to push the on button and it's going to talk me through what I need to do. Call emergency medical services now. Adult mode. Follow the voice prompt calmly. Remove all clothing from chest and stomach. Rip clothing if necessary. So we've removed the clothing and I've already started putting the pad on. Take out the pads from the bottom of the device. Tear open the pads packaging. So now I've put the pads Do on in the correct place. The patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. The DPIP is now analyzing the heart rhythm. If it wants me to shock, it's really shock important that I get time. everybody out of the way. So I'm going to ask people to stand, stand clear. clear. Going to push the button. Orange stand button clear. Now. Shocking. Shocking. Shock. Now. Shock delivered. So I've now delivered my safe shock. Begin CPR now. I can now do CPR. Press blue eye for CPR. So I now start my CPR and CPR. This analyzing heart rhythm in AED. two minutes. Will reanalyze in two minutes, like it's just told us. It's uh, very intuitive. Like I told you, it knows exactly what it's doing, which is great if you don't, because it'll help you all the way through this situation. So I'm gonna keep compressing the chest, and then after two minutes, we have a, a training school two minutes. It's asked me to come off the patient, so I'm gonna stop again. Shock advised. Okay, so it wants me to deliver another shock. So I'm gonna ask everybody to stand clear, please. Deliver shock. Now. Stand clear, shocking, shocking now. Shock delivered. And again, we've delivered a second shock. And we will Begin go back to CPR doing CPR. Now. Press the flashing blue and we would continue. I'm just going to turn this off because it's a little bit noisy. System shutting down. So, you would never turn off the DFib, obviously, in normal time. I've done that for a training purpose. We would then continue doing our rounds of CPR every two minutes and then listening to the DFib. Um, to tell us whether to shock the patient or not to. And, until a few things occur, either you get relieved by a medical professional, so they are a paramedic or a doctor or somebody um, that can help you and assist you, asks you to stop, that's absolutely fine. Or if the patient shows uh, signs of life, so if they start breathing again, if they start moving again, um, absolutely you can stop doing CPR. Just be prepared that they may rearrest again or may go back into cardiac arrest, so you do need to keep an eye on them. 
Um, but apart from that, you can you can stop doing CPR and wait until um, the, the emergency services turn up. Really important uh, as well, just to, to make sure everyone else around you is, is safe. Um, so just keep people at a distance where they're not being involved. When the ambulance turns up, they're going to ask you a few questions. They're going to ask you about the situation, what you've done, how you've helped the person. But all your efforts are going to be really valuable in, in saving uh, this person's life. So I hope I've demonstrated to you this morning how simple it is to do basic life support and also how simple it is to use an AED. Um, I know it's a short session, um, but I really hope it's been useful for you uh, during this Restart of Heart Week. And I absolutely implore all of you to go out and get a little bit more training, find a little bit more resources on the internet. Um, and we will be reposting this on our page um, once we finish today. Um, so please do reuse it in your schools, scout groups, guide groups, workplaces, show it to your children, repost it, reshare it on any social media platform you wish to. Uh, but for now and from my team, I'd like to say thank you and a happy restart of Heart Week. Take care. Bye bye for now.